Good evening. Welcome back to Answers on Eschatology. My name is Dan Derry, and I am the president of the Institute of Fulfilled Eschatology. Hey, we made it to Matthew 24, 34 in our verse-by-verse -verse study of uh, the Olivet Discourse, Matthew 24. And uh, I want to begin to share some thoughts specifically on the phrase, this generation. Now, um, we are going to uh, move beyond the, uh, the definition of Guinea. Thank God, right? Uh, listen, what we need to be able to do in this text is uh, we need to be able to uh, teach and demonstrate to those who don't yet understand this truth and, and, and to those who oppose this truth that we are not making our argument that generation, this generation refers to Jesus' generation simply on lexicon, uh, uh, definitions from lexicons or Greek grammars. We are not arguing simply the fact that generation means a group of people living together at the same period of time, which it does. That's very true. And our millennialists who insist that generation in Guinea means race of people are completely, completely wrong. But that's not the point. We need to be, be able to move beyond that argument to other things. And we, we need to be able to prove what we believe based upon uh, other avenues and other paradigms in Scripture. And that's really what I want to do uh, in these next upcoming videos. And I, what I want to do is I, I simply want to share a, somewhat of an overview uh, of how we're going to get there systematically. And, and once again, this is to help people better understand that look, we're not just shooting a, a, a one bullet here like our premillennialists. That's their only argument, that, that, this, uh, that generation means, oh, well, it could mean race of people, could mean generation so... Blah blah blah. That's not our only argument, and we need to we need to make that clear. So I want to give you some evidence that will that will load the gun for you, so to speak. Uh, you, you have more quivers, you know, arrows in the quiver, and you, you'll have lots of ammunition uh, to unload on those who just strictly look at the Greek uh, word "genia," and that's all they have. Okay. So number one, we want to go back. And we, we we want to look at how Jesus used. The Greek word genia, how he used generation, and we're not going to look at the language. We're not going. To, we're not going to dissect the Greek. I don't know how to do that. Okay, but we are going to look at how he applied it, how he interpreted that word, and, and, and throughout the entire Gospels, Jesus used that phrase, this generation, seventeen times, fourteen times outside of the Olivet Discourse, outside of Matthew twenty-four, Luke twenty-one, and Mark thirteen. And that's a that's another point that I just thought of. I just remembered. We are not just talking about the Greek word genia, generation. We're talking about the phrase, this generation. And that's why we can prove this from all these different avenues. You know, I don't, I don't believe the millennialists understand the eschatological and the soteriological significance of this generation, but we're going to show them. We're going to try to demonstrate that in the next handful of videos. So number one, we're going we're gonna to see how Jesus applied that phrase in his ministry. Number two, we're going to show you an inclusio uh, in the context of Matthew 24. And that inclusio uh, is an inclusio uh, regarding this generation. Jesus uses it twice to bookend his prophecy, which is a very, very powerful proof of how we should apply the phrase this generation. We're going to look at that. The other thing we're going to look at is that God himself identified a generation as a 40-year period. <laughs> God did. He did in the Old Covenant, and the New Testament writers also apply that biblical definition. A generation means 40 years according to Jehovah himself. We're going we're gonna to look at that as well. And by the way, that's why our premillennial friends years ago wrote the book, 88 Reasons Why Jesus is Going to Return in 1988, or something along those lines. But you know why they wrote that? It's because they understood and they believed that in 1948, Israel was reborn, quote unquote. And they believe, well, 40 years, a generation from 1948 is 1988. Hey, Jesus is coming back in 1988. But guess what? After that failed, they began to change their, change their tune about a generation. Well, no, 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 no. It doesn't mean 40 years. And no, no, it doesn't have to mean a generation now. It could mean a race of people. You see, by failed prophecy... They went back on what they knew was the truth. We're going, to, we're going to show that to you. Another way we're going to prove that this generation means Jesus' generation is that we're going to show you that that phrase, this generation, is eschatological. 
and it concerns Israel's last days, their latter end. And that's that's out of the Old Testament prophets. Listen, Jesus was a minister of the circumcision to confirm the promises made to the fathers. He was quoting Old Testament prophecy that concerned his people in their last days. He showed up as a minister to his people in their last days and employed that language of this generation. We're going to demonstrate that. This is prophetic. This is uh, it's eschatological. It has a massive significance. It's not just generation. It's this generation. And finally, we're going to look at the phrase, this generation, as being typological. This is something that our, our futurists, specifically the, our millennial brethren, have just no earthly concept about. Okay? It is typological uh, in regards to second exodus, Israel's second exodus. And, and here's what we're going to look at as well regarding this, this exodus of this new generation, is that not only was it an exodus out of bondage into the inheritance for the righteous, it would mean their true inheritance for that generation, but this generation also refers to the wicked, who again would, re would rebel and refuse their inheritance, and they would suffer the, the damnation or the the uh, uh, the rejection at the end of the second exodus, and all this is 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 found in that idea. This generation. So that's kind of where we're going in the next in the next handful of videos. We're going to look at some powerful concepts that listen. Even if we didn't have the evidence of Guinea, meaning uh, a group of people living together at the same period of time, even if we didn't have that. We could prove that Jesus' words, this generation, meant his contemporary generation of people living together in Israel's last days. And that's what we have. We have all of it. Our millennial friends, they have one bullet in their gun. And guess what, man? We got, we got the bazooka. We got all the evidence. We got all the eggs in our basket. And I want to unload them to you over the next several videos so you'll have evidence. So you'll have... Um, just ample support to prove what you believe uh, as, we, as we move forward and, and prove powerfully that all things have been fulfilled in the first century generation. And Matthew 24 is a fulfilled prophecy. And uh, we'll share lots more next time on Answers on Eschatology. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.